And when he told Abraham in Genesis twenty two seventeen that his seed would be like the stars in the sky or the sand on the seashore. God was using the stars and the sand to communicate the kind of abundance Abraham's seed would be like. Something happened to me this morning when I was praying. And it's only happened, this is only the second time it happened. It happened once with my sister. I was praying for her and I saw rain. She was out in the rain. And I thought it was just natural, just regular rain. It was, it was in the form of rain. And she was lifting her face up, getting drenched and enjoying the rain. And I heard as I was seeing it, this is the abundance of God. The abundance of divine blessing coming down upon her. And so in our next Skype conversation, I told her what I had seen. I said, I, I saw the rain coming down upon you. And it was in the form of natural rain, but it was the blessing of God, the abundance of God coming down upon you like rain. And I said, I don't know what's happening with you, but one thing I know, <laughs> it is raining. She recently told me some of the things that happened after that, after I shared that with her. It's just amazing. It's amazing to me how God confirmed it that word to her well I didn't know what the weather was outside this morning I just I was praying this morning around four and I just went off into a vision and I saw that rain again but it wasn't in South Africa It was here in Virginia Beach. And I saw individuals and families of this church not running from the rain, running out into it. And that rain was the blessing and the abundance of God. Today, I want to tell you beyond what you see outside, it is raining. I want you to just, if you would for a moment, close your eyes and envision you and your family not running from this rain. You don't need an umbrella. You're running to this rain. You're out in the rain. See it drench your face, drench your clothes, drench your children, drench your spouse. But this is not natural rain. It's in the form of natural rain, but it's the rain of the blessing and the abundance of God. And I declare to you today by the word of the living God it is raining. The blessing and the abundance of God 
is raining on your life and mine. I declare you drenched. <laughs> I declare your clothes soaked. I declare your life drenched and soaked in the rain of the blessing of God. And I declare by the word of the Lord, this is not a one-day rain. This is a rain that comes back day after day, after day, after day. The deluge of God. The deluge of divine blessing is upon us. It is raining. And it won't stop. Come on, tell somebody it's raining. And it won't stop. Tell somebody else it's raining and it won't stop. Lord, you're the God who watches over your word to perform it. Now I have declared to your people what you showed me. Thank you for what happens from the day. Thank you for the rain of your blessing and abundance and overflow that has come and won't stop upon your people. Thank you that by your divine hand it is raining. Today, as you bring your tithe and offering to the Lord, bring your tithe and offering in the rain. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this, come. As the ushers direct you from the rear, come in the reign of God. Bring your tithes and offerings to him. Prosper in the rain. Lord, we lift up these tithes and offerings in the rain to you. You're the God of the former and latter rain. 
as we present these to you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for worshiping our Father with them on our behalf. And we thank you for the release of overflowing rain, of blessing and abundance upon us as your people. Be glorified as we live our lives in the rain of your blessing and abundance. It is so now, in Jesus' name, amen. Are we going, Selena, come up here, come up here. Stand right there. In this flow, in this outflow of the reign of God, I declare the blessing of the Lord upon your house. I declare the blessing of the Lord upon your children. I declare things happen from today in your house that you've not seen before. That this reign and blessing of God invades your house in a way that has never happened before. Today you leave this place blessed in the reign of God. And the blessing is upon your children. Father, thank you for confirming that to her today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Love you. <laughs> You know, that's got that been a long time since that's happened. Once I get started, it starts flowing. Uh, the children are being released. Is it everybody today, Eldad? Everybody today, God bless you in the reign of the blessing of the Lord as you go. Prosper greatly. May the teachers be blessed. Pastor Bones uh, prayed for, I appreciate his prayer for Deacon Ron and our dear sister Darina. They were rear-ended at a stoplight, um, I believe it was yesterday, and uh, they were taken to the hospital. She had a mild concussion, and uh, they are very sore, so please keep them in your prayers, and and uh, love on them as the Lord directs you. Um, I thank God for you. I thank God for the privilege to be a part of this ministry. And I thank God for you who are part of this house, for you who are here today. God is downloading. a fresh perspective on serving and the power of it and how it so is like him. Um, 
we started off two weeks ago. Last Sunday, we were at Pastor Rupa George's church. Uh, Dr. Sharon started us off on that snowy Sunday with a taped message. I came back the next Sunday with it. We continue today in this area. Be open to what God will confirm that you already know about this. Also be open to the flashes of insight that this morning will come. There will be things you just may not have heard. It's all good. And today, I want you to look with me at a portion of the life of Joseph from Genesis chapter 29. Uh, no, 39. I said 29. Genesis 39. Genesis chapter 39. Verses 1 through 6. Genesis, would you stand with us for the reading of this? Uh, it's going to show up uh, on the screen. Genesis chapter 39, verses 1 through 6. We can read this together. If you don't have a new King James, it's up there on the screen. Let's read together. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. So it was from the time that he made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. Lord, thank you for the wisdom and revelation that has left your throne and entered this building. Over these next few moments, thank you for blessing us to fully hear all you say and to fully apply what we hear to our lives. Be glorified in the full return on this word as you release it now to us in Jesus' name. And all the people said, amen, amen and amen and amen. The life of Joseph as recorded in the scripture is one of my favorite stories in the Bible along with every other story. <laughs> we read 
the scriptures that speak about Joseph's life in a very undesirable transition. In previous chapters, his father had sent him out to bring some food to his brothers who were in the field with the livestock. And they initially, because there was intense rivalry in the family, and Joseph uh, was thought to be his father's favorite. And perhaps in some ways he was because Jacob didn't make anybody else a coat. <laughs> what I'm watching in my own house is how my children watch out for themselves with each other. And if I ever promise one something, they're on a me too bandwagon. <laughs> and uh, I have to be careful not to show favoritism because of the attention of parents is discerned very carefully by their children, especially as it is given out to each one of them. Joseph had a dream. In fact, he had two dreams while he was with his family. In one of his dreams, his brothers were bowing down to him. In the second dream, even his father was bowing down to him. And God showed Joseph his dream for his life in some of the final stages of his fulfillment. And when God gives a dream, he gives the stages that we can work to. He doesn't often show us all the process of getting to that stage. Joseph was, by his brothers, sold to Ishmaelites. They decided not to kill him. They sold him. And though he was crying not to be sold, he was taken off to Egypt. I want you to understand something because I, I hadn't always seen this and Joseph realized it later when he said you know his brothers were afraid that he would take out vengeance on them and he said no, 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 God use this. You meant it for evil, but God was in it making it work for good. He had these dreams, and then he left his family. <laughs> he had two dreams from God, and then he was taken away from his family. Very few dreams from God can fully be realized around family. Come on now. <laughs> Which is why the Lord told Abraham, get away from your family. Leave your family. Go to the land I will show you. Because, listen, I, didn't, I had not seen this. It was even so of Jesus. The people who he grew up with were the ones 
who least could receive from him as the Messiah. And let me tell you why often the dream of God requires, and I don't mean leaving immediate family, I mean leaving extended family. You often have to leave the people you've grown up with. Because those people never know you by the anointing. They just know you as the person they grew up with. And they have ideas about you. And often God, like he did with Joseph, has to allow you to leave that environment and perhaps come back later and serve them. Because the people you grew up with really put a lid on how you can serve them. I got a few nods and a couple of amen, but I know I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> People you grow up with know you by the flesh. God has to often take you away from them to reintroduce you to them by the spirit. God did not allow Joseph to be sold to Egypt, into Egypt to suffer. He allowed him to be sold to serve. What he did not know was that between the seeing of his dream and the fulfillment of it would be the process of learning how to serve. And that dream could not be fulfilled in a family context where people are competing for significance. Joseph went into Egypt with no sense of significance. The significance he had at his father's house was stripped away from him when he was sold to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. His special coat meant nothing in Egypt. He went to Egypt as a slave. Potiphar bought him from the Ishmaelites as a slave. So he goes from this covenant experience in his father's house to a slave experience in Egypt. not understanding what's going on. We come into the story. He's at Potiphar's house. Potiphar has purchased him. And Joseph has a decision to make because life in his experience at this point is unfair. 
And what do you do when you encounter a patch of experience in life that is unfair? What do you do when people do or say things about you they shouldn't say and they shouldn't do, but they do them? And what do you do when the Lord doesn't stop it? Because the word says the Lord was with Joseph. Well, where was the Lord when he was put in the pit? Where was the Lord when he was sold to the Israelites? Okay. He was with him then. That's right. The Lord didn't suddenly arrive with Joseph and come to him in Egypt. He was with him when his brothers put him in that pit. When they were talking about killing him and decided later to sell him when he was going down to Egypt wondering what was going on. The Lord was with him. Please understand that when God is with us, everything he doesn't stop, he will use. Do you hear what I'm saying? God doesn't stop people from saying some things about us that are not true. They can't stop God from using it to elevate us. You see what I'm saying? Everything he doesn't stop, he used. He'll use it. And he didn't stop Joseph from going to Egypt. He didn't stop him from being sold to the Israelites. He didn't stop him from being purchased by Potiphar as a slave because he was going to use it. And if Joseph had ever made the mistake of saying, where is God? And if God is with me, why in the world am I going through this? Listen, don't always measure the presence of God with you by the beginning of an unpleasant experience. Measure his presence by what happens in the outcome. <laughs> because Joseph didn't even know that the very place he would enter as a slave, he would one day rule. Mm. He didn't know that the very place he would enter as a slave, Potiphar, or, or rather Pharaoh, would create a special office for him and tell him one day, the only difference between me and you in terms of power in this nation is that I'm sitting on the throne and you're not. But in, in, in actuality, you are operationally Pharaoh of Egypt. <laughs> so it really doesn't matter so much how you go in, it matters how you come out. That's right. That's right. Joseph, When he was purchased by Potiphar, he had a choice. And I love the character of Joseph because Joseph never allowed the mistreatment of his brothers to determine how he would continue to live his life. So you can keep going back to an unpleasant time and keep reliving it and it can keep messing over your future. Yeah. Joseph didn't rehearse his brother's treatment to Potiphar. He never brought it up. That's right. 
And he never sat in Potiphar's house and said, I shouldn't even be here. I ain't doing nothing. I, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm Joseph. My daddy is Jacob. I ain't supposed to be here. No, I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> you don't do that. No. Joseph did something as a model for the ages. Listen to me. He served his way out of trial. Instead of sulking, he served. Instead of thinking about how his life should be better, he started thinking about how he could make the life better of those around him. And when a trial can't keep your mind stuck on yourself, you have already defeated it. So he goes into Pharaoh's, goes into to Potiphar's house. And the word of God says, he brought him from the Ishmaelites. And I love what it says in verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man. Listen to me. The presence and success and blessing of the Lord, which was with Joseph, could only show up when Joseph began to serve. The presence of God was on him. Potiphar would never have seen the result of it had he not served. The success of God was on him. His trial couldn't separate him from divine success. That success became manifest only when he served. The blessing of God was on him. The blessing of God could only show up that was on him when he served. His master saw that the Lord was with him. His master didn't see that the Lord was with him just because he was there. People don't see God just when they see us. They see God mostly through us when we are serving. That's where God shows up. That's where his blessing and success shows up because the God who blesses us is himself the serving God. Come on, tell somebody, it's in the serving. Verse 3 says, his master saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord made all he did in serving to prosper. The prosperity of God could only show up when he served. Potiphar could only see that God made all he did to prosper when he did something, when he served. Come on, tell somebody it's in the service. In the service. Look at verse 4.
And Joseph what? Joseph what? Found favor. How did he find it? <laughs> huh? He found favor. How did he find it? Serving. He found favor as the result of his serving. God has favor for all of us to find. It won't come just because you pray for it. The favor God has for us to find on our jobs. How will we find it? It's favor that results from how we serve. Joseph found favor. You and I will find it. But it will be favor that answers to how we serve. Now, I want you to notice something that I have never, I have looked at this, I have studied this, I have taught from this, but what I'm about to share with you now, I have never seen it, I have never taught it, I have never heard it. But it's right there. Look at this. It says in verse 5, so it was from the time that he made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Listen to me. This was Joseph's job at this point. And the blessing of the Lord came upon his job through the avenue of his serving. Joseph's serving was how God's blessing got to Pharaoh's house. Had Joseph not been serving at his house, the blessing of the Lord would never have shown up at Potiphar's house the way it did. The blessing of the Lord used the avenue of Joseph's serving to arrive at Potiphar's house. I don't know why I'm in this job. I don't like it. I don't like the people. They don't like me. God, why am I here? So that the blessing, because without you being there, there's no other avenue for the blessing of the Lord to get to that place. The blessing is coming through how you serve there. Because you are a kingdom person there. You're a person in touch with the most high God there. So when you serve there, something comes from God through your service to that place. That doesn't show up until you serve there. Your service on your job makes it a better place. Your service there makes it a more blessed place. Hello? God blesses this imperfect world 
through kingdom people serving in places that can be avenues of divine blessing. Ain't nobody else in this whole job that knows the Lord. That means your life is going to make more of an impact. That means some people's lives are going to get dramatically better because you're serving there. And some other people just might come to know the Lord because you're serving there. <laughs> oh, I come home sometime and I'm just tired and my kids don't know how to let me rest. And they asked me to do things and I have said, well, no, I'm not now. I'm just going, right now I'm going to rest. But they won't let me rest. And you know, one of the things I've come to realize, even in a believing household, Blessings show up when I serve at the point I don't feel like it. You hear what I'm saying? I don't feel like it today. No, no, not today. Let me rest right now. Dad, I need this. You don't need it from me. <laughs> and then the Lord said, go ahead and serve them. And in the process of serving them, something comes a fresh wave of blessing comes into my house because I am serving even when I don't feel like it. And what I found out is many times I have to serve my way into the feeling. I can't feel my way into the service. <laughs> Oh, God. Serving is an avenue of divine blessing. The blessing of God shows up when his people are serving. We're not just on our jobs to get paychecks. We're there to bring a kingdom atmosphere that improves the lives of other people who might never even know that you know the Lord until their lives get better. <laughs> when the job, listen, when you start serving at a place that doesn't seem to recognize who you are, and what you bring to it, God will give it a certain amount of time to recognize that. And if it doesn't, he'll move you up. Because the ultimate person we serve is not the people, it's the Lord. We're serving the Lord on that job. We're serving the Lord in our home. He's the ultimate person we're serving. We're actually serving through others to him. Come on, somebody. The amens are slow. I got one brother with me this morning. <laughs> Listen. I'm really not most like God. Now, I'm, God does receive. But I'm not, I'm not really most like God when I'm receiving. For God so loved the world. I'm most like God when I'm giving. I'm most like God when I'm serving. God receives a lot. But listen, let me tell you something. With all the praise and everything else he receives, he doesn't receive at the level he gives. 
We look at the praise he receives and, oh, God, giving all that praise. You don't know what he's giving. In fact, he can't receive at the level he gives. What are you talking about, Pastor? He can't receive at the level he gives. Because the praise he receives comes from people, from angels, from beings. What he receives would have to come at the level of God. And the only thing that flows at the level of God with him is what he gives. He can't receive at the level of God because there's nobody else, God, but him. <laughs> oh, you just missed a good chance to say amen. With all that God receives, he can never receive at the level of God. The level of God only applies to what comes from him. It can never apply to what comes to him. And he graciously receives it because that's all that the people can do. But with all of the accolades of all of the beings who praise him, it never is at the level of God. So that I'm most like God when I'm giving. When I'm, when I'm serving. And this is how the blessing showed up with Joseph. When he started serving, bam, the blessing showed up. Part of what began to recognize somebody, something's going on with him that I ain't seen in my house before. I love this. I love this. Joseph not only served with excellence, not only manifested the success, the presence, and the blessing of God when he served, but notice this. There was something about the way he served that Potiphar knew he could trust. Oh, God. His integrity was so high that an ungodly man, a person who didn't even know anything about the Lord, said, I don't even have to, I don't even have to keep counting what I have. As long as Joseph knows what I have, it's secure. And one of the things that will distinguish us from people who don't know God is that we can be trusted. Pastor, I was working this job and, and, and I got laid off. They told me they, they told me to stop. You know, I was just, just taking my Bible out, just sharing with somebody. Was you sharing with somebody from the Bible when you were supposed to be working? <laughs> you weren't being paid. You weren't being paid to open the Bible. That's right. Share from the Bible on your own time. Don't share from the Bible on the time you're paid to be doing something else. Let the people who pay you know they can trust you to do what they pay you to do when they don't see you. That's right. When they don't see you. You gonna be my friend later today? Come on, you're looking strange at me. <laughs> if anybody needs to be known for giving a full day's work for a full day's pay, it should be us. It should be the believers. It should be the kingdom people. If anybody should be known 
as people who can be trusted. It's us. And you know what? People, employers aren't always just looking for somebody who, who can do the work. They're looking for somebody they can trust. There's no amount of money. That, the value of a trustworthy person So Joseph goes to Egypt to demonstrate God's presence, to demonstrate God's success, to demonstrate God's blessing, to demonstrate he can be trusted. And it would all happen when he served. <laughs> we are the most unstoppable when we're praying and serving. And if there's one trick of hell, if there's one of hell's ploys, it's to try to get us to where we shut our serving down yeah. to just focus on ourselves. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because when we are serving, we are most like the one who's defeated hell. Mm. That's it. That's it. And we cannot be stopped when we're serving. Because our serving is the avenue of divine blessing. Our serving is the avenue of divine success. Our serving is the avenue where God manifests himself. And our serving is how God promotes us. <laughs> Joseph went to Potiphar's house, hear me now, I'm, I'm about done. I got nine minutes according to my clock. I'm watching it. <laughs> Joseph went to Potiphar's house with the title of a slave. Yeah. You hear what I said? Yeah. But listen to me. Though he had the title of a slave, he had the service of an overseer. Because Joseph's service was the service of an overseer, though he came in with the title of a slave, his title had to change to match his service. It don't matter what title you have going into the job. Once you start serving with the excellence God has anointed you to serve with, your service will outgrow your title. And it'll either be changed there or God will change it by promoting you somewhere else. But he does it when we serve. Joseph didn't serve down to his title. He didn't let the title he had determine how he served. Since I'm here as a slave, I may as well serve like what? No. He served out of his character, not his title. And when I'm serving out of my character, God will make sure my title keeps rising to match the character out of which I'm serving. Oh, come on, somebody. You didn't hear what I said. 
God says, just bring the character to that place. Just bring the character to that job. Just serve out of the character I put in you. I will cause the title to rise to match the character. So Joseph goes in to part of his house as a slave. In a short time, he's the overseer. <laughs> oh, he's the overseer. And Potiphar realizes the more I can put in his hand, the more blessed I'm going to be. The more I can entrust to him, the better off I'm going to be. Something's on him that's coming into this place that's making this a better place. And it keeps getting better the more authority I give to him. Kingdom people serving are like no other people in this world. No one else has the force to bless to change, to make better than we do. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. So today, I'm telling you just like it was with Joseph, so it is with us. We can serve our way into promotion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just, just be yourself in the character of God and watch God cause you to rise. Don't worry about the title you didn't get when you came in. Just bring the character of your service to the job and the title will catch up to you. I'm prophesying this to you. They may not know who you are coming in, but they'll know who you are before you go out. Because you bring something as a kingdom person nobody else has. And when you act in kingdom character, you act as the most trustworthy person on the scene. <laughs> ah, God. Joseph shows us at the beginning of his life that if we'll just, wherever we are, in whatever situation we're in, if we'll just understand God is, God is with us, God's success is going to show up with us. God's blessing is going to show up through us. Promotion is going to come to us yeah. as we serve. This is the last thing I'll say. My mind goes back to the descriptions of heaven and you saw you saw on that um, that little video that I played this morning something that reminds me to say this I do believe with all of my heart that in the vastness of the universe God has created I believe the opportunities for serving are not limited to this side. The idea of just all we do on the other side is just sit around and sing songs and pray. That's a big part of it. But I believe this description of heaven is accurate. Along with these intense times of worship and assembly. I believe this description is true. There are times when the throne is empty. 
when the place where heaven assembles, nobody's there. Because everybody is somewhere out in the vast universe of God serving. If service stopped on this side, Jesus would have never risen up, ascended, only to serve us at another level. The one who served us at Calvary is now serving us at the throne. He ever lives to make intercession for us. And in so doing, he's still serving us. So serving does carry over from this side to that. And the reward we have at the beamer seat of Jesus will be the reward for serving. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make you a ruler eternally over many things so you can keep serving at a promoted level. So whether somebody pats you on the back or not here, whether you get a parade for every good thing you do here, not the point. God is taking note of it. God is recording it. And God is rewarding it. Never stop serving. Keep serving. And keep being promoted. This is the kingdom way. Did you hear from God today? Oh, come on, stand if you will. Father, we give you praise. You're the awesome God who's taught us and is teaching us. Thank you for opening our eyes to dimensions of kingdom life in the arena of serving like we've never seen before. Thank you for your presence on us your blessing, your success, your promotion, all attending to our serving. We love you, Lord. The significance of our lives on earth when we answer the question of what we are here for it will be a, a, a question that is answered by how we serve today one of the greatest things about coming to know Jesus is by coming to know him as Lord, I start learning how to serve. There'd be no way to come to Jesus if he hadn't first served us by giving us away. The very fact that we can come to Jesus is a fact that's there because of how Jesus has served us. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but by me. The way to God has served us by laying down his life so we through him could come to God. Today, is there anyone here who would say, Pastor, 
I want to learn what the significance of my life is on this planet. I, I, I want to make Jesus Lord so I can know why I'm here. I want God to have his place in my life so he can teach me the significance of why I'm on this planet. Are you here? I'm looking with every head bowed, no one watching, anyone. Anyone here? Anyone here? Anyone here? Anyone here? If you need prayer for any reason, these anointed altar workers and others who are around here can pray. Maybe there's something that's happened that's trying to keep you from serving. Maybe something's happened that's trying to bog you down. Prayer can loosen it up and get you back on the track of serving so you can move on to promotion and advancement in the plan of God. These anointed ladies are standing here, and if you need prayer for anything, you feel free to come and receive that prayer. As I end my portion of time here today, Never stop serving. Always keep moving into divine promotion after promotion because you're serving. Lord, thank you for sealing this word in the lives of your people. Now I declare them blessed as I declare these words unto them. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. He will be gracious unto you. The Lord who has served us and continues to do so lifts up his divine countenance upon you and upon me. And he who has served us with life also serves us with peace. And they who walked in his peace and his life said to that blessing, Amen. Love you. God bless you.